I think the Mediterranean diet needs a comeback. It doesn't matter if it's keto or if it's with fasting or whatever. Mediterranean is an awesome way to eat. Whether you want to take a Mediterranean diet and do it in carnivore fashion, Mediterranean and do it somewhat vegetarian, there are lots of reasons why Mediterranean style eating is so beneficial. And a lot of it comes right back to the omega-3s, but more so the monounsaturated fats. Okay, the forgotten fat that was so important 10, 15, 20 years ago, but now we're all just onto different things and we're not talking about it as much. So a lot of this video is surrounding a particular study that was published in Diabetes Care that talks about visceral fat and trunk fat and belly fat and how a Mediterranean diet is very, very powerful at affecting this in a positive way. Hey, I do want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button that's down there in the bottom right and then also hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. That way you never miss a beat. Remember, this video is for informational purposes only. I'm not a doctor. I'm just some guy on the internet, but I did lose about 100 pounds and I do enjoy biochemistry and like to share it with you. So anyhow, let's dive into this. This study that was published in Diabetes Care took a look at two groups, okay? It took a look at subjects that were consuming a good amount of carbs, 65% carbohydrate, but along with 6% saturated fat, only 8% monounsaturated fat, and 6% uh, omega-3s or polyunsaturated fats. The other group, 47% carbohydrates, so still a good amount of carbohydrates. We're not pushing a low carb agenda here. It's just straight up 47% carbohydrates, and then we're looking at 9% saturated fats, 23% monounsaturated fats, with 75% of which coming from olive oil, and 6% polyunsaturated fats. Why am I touting this as such a cool thing? Because the results speak for themselves. Okay, so same amount of calories in both groups highly, highly regimented, okay? Highly overseen, no variation, same amount of calories. The group that consumed more the monounsaturated fats had a reduction in their belly fat and a reduction in their trunk fat, reduction in visceral fat. Their redistribution was much better. Neither groups lost weight, that's what's wild. They didn't even lose weight, they just redistributed. That's so cool. The group that consumed the higher carbohydrates actually gained weight in their abdomen. And again, I'm not here to bash carbohydrates. That's not even my goal. It's just a way of me defining this, the two types of diets. So what really comes down to it is the monounsaturated fats. That is where the benefits lie. The monounsaturated fats have a powerful effect, mainly utilizing something called oleic acid. Now, oleic acid, I've talked about in many videos before, but oleic acid is a specific part of the fat, okay, the specific part of the oil. So when you look at avocado oil, when you look at olive oil, high amounts of oleic acid. Oleic acid does a number of things, but one of the main things that it does is it activates or converts into something known as OEA, okay? Long, long name is oleolanethanolamine, which blah, 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 sounds like that pretty much. So OEA has an ability to activate what is called an uncoupling protein. So I'm gonna get into some science here for a second. By the way, good sources of monounsaturated fats that you can get before I get into the details. Again, olive oil, eating straight up olives, like you can get those snack olives, avocado oil or eating pure avocados themselves, okay? Uh, macadamia nuts are really good. Almonds, if you get them in a sprouted form. Uh, also, even some of the other nuts, like pecans, are still gonna be good if you get them in a sprouted form. Okay, so anyway, just load up on those things just as long as you're getting a good quality. Uh, if you use Thrive Market down below, you can get a lot of that stuff just delivered right to your doorstep. They're a big supporter of this channel. I use them for almost all my pantry goods. They've been on this channel for like two years now, so anyone that watches my channel knows that they're here. But anyway, highly recommend. There's a special offer down below if you wanna try them out using the link down below in the description. They get all your groceries delivered right to your doorstep. Don't even have to leave the house. Don't have to go to the grocery store. Saves you time, saves you money that way. So highly recommend you check them out. Okay, so I wanna come back to science really quick just for a brief moment. Okay, we have this uh, uncoupling protein thing that I talked about. In our bodies, we have brown fat. This brown fat uses energy that we eat to turn into body heat. And as I've referenced in other videos, you have two options. <laughs> you can mobilize fat and then have to go out and run and burn it, or you can mobilize fat and have that fat just incinerated as heat, sitting on the couch watching Hulu or Netflix. Come on, which one sounds a little bit more fun? Like just burning fat for free is kind of awesome. Turns out that oleic acid helps that process occur because it increases the activation of uncoupling proteins. Uncoupling proteins stand in the way of normal cellular energy production, making it so that when the cells are trying to produce energy, they short circuit and create heat. So you just 
break into non-shivering thermogenesis where you burn heat. You burn heat instead of energy. So therefore you burn more calories at rest. So oleic acid has that powerful effect. That's probably, if I could speculate based on other science that I've seen, why this diabetes care journal shows that Mediterranean diets are so beneficial for visceral fat and trunk fat. It is redistributing and it increasing those uncoupling proteins. The interesting thing is, is that these subjects saw such an improvement by adding these oils into the mix, even without massively reducing carbohydrates. Now, I think one could argue that if they reduce carbohydrates even more, there probably would be an even more beneficial effect. In fact, I've done videos talking about what I call Mediterranean keto, which is, I think, very effective. And I have a cookbook coming out on that here in just a few months. But I think we have to look at the big picture. People that incorporate a Mediterranean style diet usually are allocating more of their calories towards these healthier fats that are having a powerful impact on brown fat and indirectly. Now, another piece that we're gonna to need to touch on for a minute is something called adenopectin, okay? Adenopectin is related with fat loss. When adenopectin goes up, we know that fat loss is occurring. So if this is happening, we can speculate that we're gonna burn more fat. Well, it turns out the Mediterranean diet triggers an increase in adenopectin. Now, looking at all these things that you could be doing with this Mediterranean diet to balance it out. Okay, you've got high levels of olive oil, you've got high levels of avocado oil and things like that. Okay, you've got relatively modest levels of protein. You don't need to be doing anything crazy. Okay, I would say 20, 30% protein is probably all you would need in this particular style of diet because you have carbohydrates making up some of that pie chart too. Now, the kinds of proteins you would wanna to lean towards in this case are going to be proteins that are rich in good omega-3s and low in omega-6s. You would not want to be loading up on very low quality red meat. It would be a terrible time to do it because it would counteract a lot of the benefit of what you're doing. The balanced Mediterranean diet is largely poultry and fish. However, I will say that good quality red meat clearly has a place. Okay, conjugated linoleic acid, which is in red meat, has been associated with modest amounts of weight loss. Okay. Simply put, conjugated linoleic acid helps your body utilize fat a little bit better. So good quality beef that is lean, like fillets and flank steak and stuff like that, is going to be totally fine. You just don't want to load up on greasy ribeyes on a Mediterranean style diet. Then of course, high omega-3 fish, sockeye salmon, sardines, anchovies, eat those things. Eat that smoked salmon, stuff like that. That fits into a Mediterranean profile. Then the kinds of carbohydrates you might want to be implementing in are going to probably be things like chickpeas and lentils and cassava, all things that I talk about as sort of my go-to carbohydrates when I'm not doing a low-carb diet. Okay, lower glycemic is usually the name of the game with Mediterranean. You don't see a whole lot of pure white rice. You might see some orzo and stuff like that, but generally you're looking at relatively low glycemic. Also lots of things like squash. Okay, so you're looking at like butternut squash, zucchini, um, regular crookneck squash, which are veggies, but at the same time, they're still carbohydrates, right? They're still so anyway, a lot of these things that I'm talking about, not necessarily in the fresh sense, but more in a package sense, you can also get through Thrive, so make sure you do check them out. But lastly, the saturated fats that you wanna be leaning towards are actually gonna be coming from good quality cheeses. Yeah, you can get the coconut oil and stuff like that, that's all great. But good quality cheese and good quality ghee is going to be really good. Dairy is not the enemy as long as it's the right dairy. Not all dairy is created equal, okay? So we've got Parmesan cheese is probably one of the best cheeses you can use. The probiotic effect that is there just from the aging process denatures and breaks down the casein proteins, which would ordinarily be pretty tough to break down. So it ends up making it so that dairy is a little less evil, so to speak, and allowed. Okay, Mediterranean diets eat a fair bit of these good quality aged cheeses. So anyhow, that's how you're gonna round out a Mediterranean style diet. Combine it with keto, combine it with fasting, do what you wanna do. But at the end of the day, it's the monounsaturated fats that are gonna make the biggest impact in my honest opinion. See you tomorrow.